To all CG leaders, the next training is happening this Friday, 6 August at 8.30pm via Zoom. Do look out for the details via the WhatsApp group. NECF's 40-day Fast and Prayer is back from 7 August to 15 September this year under the team Be Still and Know That I Am God based on Psalms 46 verse 10. Soft copies of the NECF 40-day prayer booklets with daily devotionals and prayer points are available through your CG leaders, HOMs and Pastor Esther to help you on your journey. A children's version of the booklet is also available upon request. Once again, we meet uh, this Sunday morning uh, for Holy Communion. And before we go into the sermon proper, let us uh, take time to look to the Lord. Let us take time to reflect this uh, past month, uh, the goodness of God, how uh, the Lord has, by His grace, uh, brought us through even difficult times like this uh, in, the, in blessing and in grace. Let us bow our heads as we commit this time to the Lord. Father, we thank you once again for the provision of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the blood of Jesus that cleanses all our sins. And today, even as we come together in remembrance of the Lord, of His death and His resurrection, we pray, O oh Father, that the presence of God will fill us so that we may experience Your love and Your grace in a fresh new way this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Verse 24, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread. Verse 25 In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the cup. Verse 26 For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Father, once again, we thank You for our Lord and our Jesus, for our Saviour who died on the cross for us. And today, even as we remember Him in His person and His work, in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection, grant us this grace to experience his love, to experience indeed that presence and the power of God in our lives. That in the hope of the glory of God, we look with expectation for his coming once again, for each and every one of us. And today, as I bring your people to your throne of grace and mercy, I pray that the glory of God will rest upon them in a mighty way. 
And in that glory of God, they will experience a fresh presence of God in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are still going through difficult times. And in the midst of the difficult circumstances of this present period, it is needful for all of us as a people of God to keep in mind two things. One, we have to keep in mind the priority of our Christian lives. What is the priority of our Christian life? And the second is we need to look afresh at the purpose for which God called us into his kingdom. I have to admit that oftentimes the circumstances of life may overwhelm us and it is difficult for many of us to maintain the stance of faith and this focus upon God. However, it must be said that it is especially through difficult times and difficult circumstances that we need to set our priority right and we need to remind ourselves of the purpose for which God has called us. The sermon text for today is drawn from the second epistle written to the Corinth church. The verses are drawn from the third chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 11 to 18, altogether eight verses is the sermon text. Verse 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts. Verse 12, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Verse 13, We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. Verse 14, but their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same will remains when the old covenant is wrecked. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Verse 15, even to this day, when Moses is read, read a will covers their hearts. Verse 16, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the will is taken away. Verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And then comes the key verse, verse 18. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. In this section of this epistle written to the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul is comparing the glory of the old covenant with that of the new covenant. And verse 11 is written this way. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? It is talking about the old covenant, which was temporary compared to the new covenant that is eternal. And it is reflected in the very fact that the glory that came upon the Moses was a glory that was only temporary because it was a fading glory. While the glory 
that came along with Jesus was a glory that lasts. The prophet Moses is identified with uh, the old covenant, while the person identified with the new covenant is our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And verses 13 to 15 is actually a commentary of Exodus 34 verses 29 to 35. In verse 13, and I read once again, we are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. In Exodus verse 34, what was uh, being described, uh, it was in the context of Moses uh, having spent 40 days and 40 nights uh, with the Lord. And he was up in Mount Sinai, and uh, as he came down uh, to the foot of the mountain, uh, the, uh, the author Moses uh, himself, he wrote about the very fact that his face shone with the glory of God. It was radiant. But in those few verses, 29 to 35 of Exodus 34, it was also described that Every time Moses entered the tabernacle, he would uh, take off his veil. But every time he came out from the tabernacle, when he was with the people, he would put on the veil. And the reason the Apostle Paul gives is because he did not want the Israelites to see the fading of their radiance. And uh, it showed that the glory that came upon Moses as he had spent uh, 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord up in, on top in Mount Sinai was a fading glory. Now, by verse 16, we turn into uh, the New Covenant uh, description. And in verse 16, the Apostle Paul writes, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For us, as children of God, as people of God, we have turned to the Lord. And as we have turned to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The meaning of the veil taken away is that right now, we already are experiencing a glory that lasts. That the glory that we reflect is a glory that is eternal, which means it is a permanent glory of the Lord. It is not a fading glory. So that is why the will is not needed anymore. There is no longer that need for that will because in Christ we already reflect a glory that is lasting and does not fade. Then uh, we come to the key verse, verse 18. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Here it is written very clearly as children of God, disciples of Christ, as a people of God, each of us individually and as a church, we reflect the glory of the Lord. And the degree in which we reflect the glory of God, the degree in which we reflect it corresponds to the degree in which we experience His presence. That is why, right from the beginning of this sermon, as uh, I said, that uh, reminder that in difficult circumstances, we need to get our priority right. That in our Christian lives, what is our priority? Our priority is to experience the presence of God. And as we experience the presence of God, as we go through difficult times, that presence of God 
strengthens us. And this presence of God is what is connected to the meaning of reflecting the Lord's glory. As much as the Lord's glory is reflected in our lives, that glory comes from our experience of His presence. So our priority now, as we go through these difficult times, is to set communion with God as our priority. And such communion with the Lord, it uh, encompasses conversational prayer, that we have to converse with the Lord. Just like Moses, when he went up to the top of the mountain, to Mount Sinai, he was conversing with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, even as the Lord revealed to him his will, even as the Lord set down the requirements that he required of Israel, even as the Ten Commandments was given to him, you find that in those 40 days and 40 nights, it was recorded that Moses spoke with the Lord. So our communion with God must entail that conversation with God. It is not about just God speaking to us. It is about us conversing with Him, speaking with Him. And it also entails a devotional reading of the Word of God you will find that God primarily speaks through His Word. And in that devotional reading of the Word, on a daily basis, you will find that we will hear the Word of God more clearly. We will be able to discern the voice of the Lord, what His will is, what His purpose is, and how we are to navigate these difficult times. And thirdly, it is in those times of praise and worship, as we give our reverence to God, as we sing of His majesty, as we give glory and honour and praise to Him, that we will experience in a fresh new way the presence of God. So the priority of our Christian lives is to experience that presence of God. And the experience of the presence of God is experienced through a daily communion, which covers conversational prayer, devotional reading of the Word, and times of praise and worship. It is then, as we grow in that communion, will we be able to reflect the glory of God more intensely. We'll, we will be able to reflect the glory of God in a deeper manner. Now, the verse goes along that as we reflect the Lord's glory, verse 18 says that we are being transformed into His likeness. That a transformation is then effected that we will be transformed into the likeness of Christ. We will be transformed in our spiritual character. And it says here, with ever increasing glory, from glory to glory, meaning that we will grow from one level to another level of likeness. And this likeness of Christ is primarily referring to the spiritual character of Christ. And it is aptly described as a manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness and self-control. This is expressions of the likeness of Christ. Therefore, if our, the priority of our lives 
is the experience of the presence of God. Then the purpose, the purpose for which God called us into His kingdom is to transform us in our spiritual character so that our spiritual character will conform to the likeness of Christ. And as it is described uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the description of the fruit of the Holy Spirit which was outlined uh, just now, it revolves around these two words, love and holiness. That the likeness of Christ, that spiritual character of Christ is marked by love and holiness. The Word of God tells us very distinctly and very clearly, God is love. And at the same time, God is holy. Therefore, the purpose for which God called us is for us to grow into people, into persons which will manifest love and holiness in our lives. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul describes us as a new creation. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, uh, in us being uh, in Christ, we are now a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 23, 24, the Apostle Paul goes on to describe about this new creation and contrast it between an old self and a new self. And as far as the new self is concerned, we having a new self, a new creation, in verses 23 to 24 of Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul describes us as being made new in the attitudes of our minds to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, we must not lose sight of this purpose in our lives, to grow into persons who better reflect the glory of God. Of course, uh, the, as we go through difficult circumstances, sometimes our minds may sway, we may be uh, affected, and then uh, we may be drawn away from the priority of experiencing the presence of God and drawn away from a consciousness of the purpose of growing in righteousness and holiness. But I would like to encourage all of us. It is in this presence as we set our priority right and it is in that focus upon the purpose that we are liberated from anxiety, from worry, that we are strengthened in our faith and we will experience a fresh grace of God to enable us to go through these difficult and tough times. I have to say this, that who we become in the end is more important than the state of the circumstances of our lives. And whether we are in a prosperous state or whether we are going through a time of suffering, our focus should be upon how it changes us as a person in our spiritual character. And uh, we need to be aware. Our focus should not be on the temporal prosperity, even though we thank God. And we are grateful that God does bless us temporally. Our focus is not about our achievements, even though we do give glory to God and we do enjoy the achievements which, which God has given to each and every one of us by His grace. Who we are in Christ, that's our focus, is far more important than what we can achieve in life. 
I have heard uh, people saying that uh, uh, it may be easier when we are in a good state, when we are in a temporally prosperous uh, condition to you know, uh, look into how we can grow uh, as persons, to look into the priority of our Christian life and the purposes of God. Some people believe that uh, the priority of experiencing the presence of God, the uh, purpose uh, which we are supposed to focus on uh, is a luxury and a privilege of people who are temporally prosperous. I would say that this sort of thinking is a fallacy. It is because you will find that experiencing the presence of God is what gives us that joy and that peace in life. That when a person uh, may, is in a temporally prosperous state, if he forgets the priority of communion with God and experiencing his presence, even though he may be blessed with good health and with uh, very uh, abundant finances, he may not have the joy of the Lord, the peace of God. And you will find that if he is not careful and uh, health and wealth become his idol, it will adversely affect his growth in spiritual character. Some people who have become rich have actually lost their way in the faith because pride has come into their hearts, because riches have become their idol and their anchor in life, and they may have forgotten God in the whole process of life. On the other hand, there are some people who think that there is nothing that can be gained from suffering. That uh, in suffering, we will not be able to experience the presence of God. In suffering, you will find that since uh, a person is in a very difficult uh, state, he will not really be able to focus upon the purpose which God called him to the kingdom. This is also uh, another way to say it. it is a fallacy. Whether you are prosperous, whether you are in difficult circumstances, they in no way is a factor in us setting our priority right and in us focusing on the purpose for which God called us. I want to speak to uh, both groups of people. If you are experiencing a temporal prosperity in terms of health and wealth, learn to be thankful to the Lord and learn to enjoy the blessings that God has brought your way but always maintaining that your trust is in God, not in the riches that have come your way. Your trust is in God who protects you, not in the present house that you have. If you hold that right and you maintain that even though you are in a prosperous state, your priority will still be the priority of experiencing the presence of God. Your focus will be also how you can grow to be a better person in character, to be a better person in terms of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Then you are on the right direction in your life. For those who are going through suffering, it is even more needful that your dependence is upon God. And I want to read from uh, Romans chapter 5, three verses, verses 3 to 5, where the Apostle Paul 
connects suffering with the purpose for which God called us into his kingdom. And he puts it this way, Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Surprisingly, the Apostle Paul wrote, we rejoice in our sufferings. And we need to be very clear, he did not say we rejoice for our sufferings. I mean, the, I think none of us in our right mind would want to suffer. But in our sufferings, we also rejoice. The joy of the Lord will be our strength through good and difficult times. And he explains it this way. He goes on, because we know and something good comes out from suffering that suffering produces perseverance it is character formation and it is said that true genuine the strength of character is often crafted often the produced often forged in what is called and addressed as the crucible of suffering. That suffering taken the right way, suffering seen through the perspective of God, suffering that is gone through with total trust and dependence upon God, forges a truly spiritual man because suffering can produce perseverance and perseverance produces character and character produces hope and verse 5 and hope does not disappoint us because god has poured out his love into our hearts by the holy spirit whom he has given us so what is the summary of the message of these three verses of Romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 it is that God can use good circumstances and God can also use difficult circumstances to build us up and transform us into the likeness of Christ in terms of spiritual character God wants to build us up spiritually because finally god wants us to be persons who are spiritually carrying that likeness of the character of our lord and the savior jesus christ this is a primary purpose why god called us into his kingdom it is because from us growing spiritually then you will find that we will better reflect the glory of God in our lives. As we set the priority of experiencing the presence of God, focusing upon the purpose of God in transforming us in our persons, in spiritual character, we will then be strengthened. And now we can see this line of growth that as we commune with god as we take time to spend time with god in conversational prayer in devotional reading of the word times of praise and worship we will experience in a greater manner the presence of god and in experiencing that presence of God, which is a, the priority of our Christian lives, we will be transformed for the purpose for which God called us in our spiritual character so that we grow to be better persons. We grow to be godly people. We grow to be a holy people, a righteous people. And you will find that we indeed 
will more perfectly reflect that glory of God. To God be all the glory. But the Apostle Paul, after he had written 2 Corinthians 3.18, he moves into chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians and he ends chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians with the very fact that even as we reflect the glory of God, we experience the presence of God, we set the focus upon spiritual character. In verse 16 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says that through the difficult circumstances of ministry, through the difficult uh, sufferings that he had to endure, he said this, and this is applied to his fellow workers in verse 16 of 2 Corinthians 4, Therefore, we do not lose heart. We are strong. We have perseverance. Through the difficult circumstances of life, we have that strength given by God. Though outwardly, we are wasting away. Even though the circumstances may be bad, even though at times health may be an issue, at times finances may be something that is bothering us, at times the circumstances of life may not be favouring us, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We grow stronger day by day because there is a renewal of the Spirit for in the presence of God, in the right focus about what matters in life, about us growing to be better, godly, righteous, and holy persons, we find the true meaning of life lived up as manifesting the image of God in our lives. In conclusion, we need to remember that we have to ask of the Lord that by His grace we will take time to commune with God and experience His presence. We will make it a priority in our Christian life. And in spending time with God, experiencing His presence, we will fulfill that purpose to grow from glory to glory in character transformation. It is then that we will all grow to reflect better, more perfectly and more intensely the glory of God manifested in love and holiness. And in that grace of God, we will be strengthened spiritually as we go through the trials and the difficult circumstances of life. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be called children of God. And today, even as we go through difficult circumstances brought about by this ongoing pandemic, today we ask of you for your grace to be upon us, for us to set our priority right and to focus upon the purpose for which God has called us. I pray that we will all set a daily priority of growing in the experience of the presence of God through a daily communion of conversational prayer, devotional reading of the Word, and time set aside for praise and worship. That in that priority set in our lives, we will once again be able to focus upon the purpose 
for which God has called us to grow, to be godly persons, to Christ-like character. And in that, Christ-like character will we then reflect much better and more intensely the glory of God, which is lasting and eternal. And I pray you will strengthen us so that we do not lose heart through these difficult times. For though outwardly we may face difficult circumstances, but inwardly each and every one of us shall be renewed day by day. I commit all of us unto you. Let the glory of God rest upon each and every one of us so that we may experience you, O oh Father, your power, your presence, and your peace in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.